Another day, another round of DreamWorks baddies to punish. The late 2000s might have been the most varied period for DreamWorks outputs. You had highs like Kung Fu Panda and lows like Shrek the Third. This drastic back and forth in critical reception also extends to the villains. Regardless of how great or forgettable they were, they still have cemented themselves in DreamWorks' lengthy legacy. As such, let's take up the duties of judge, jury, and executioner. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and this is Sentencing DreamWorks Villains for their their crimes. Our first trip takes us to far, far away in 2007. Everyone welcome the villains of Shrek the Third. We start off with Prince Charming. No longer a secondary antagonist, Charming gets to take center stage and quickly cements himself as one of Shrek's most dangerous foes. His plan is to gather a group of villains in an attempt to take back the kingdom, making him guilty of conspiring and usurpation right off the bat. As he returns to Far, Far Away, he begins to reign terror throughout the land, which we'll label as terrorism. Of course, Charming is after revenge on his old nemesis, Shrek. His big plan is to kill him on stage, and he comes very close. Prepare, foul beast! Your time is done! That adds attempted murder as the final addition to his list of crimes. And we didn't count his crimes in the second film. Charming is one of the most intelligent villains in the series, and he's absolutely deserving of the death penalty. Considering he almost conquered an entire kingdom and killed its ruler, it's the only punishment we think fits the severity. In the case of the medieval-themed land of Far, Far Away, it's likely this will be carried out via hanging. Our word of advice for Charming should have stuck to show business. Next is the pirate Captain Hook. As a willing participant in Prince Charming's taking of the kingdom, Hook is guilty first and foremost of aiding and abetting. He's also guilty of attempted murder after his quest to kill Arthur, who's being primed as a new heir to the throne. But we are villains! It's the only thing we know. And seeing as he is a pirate, we can go ahead and add piracy to his list of crimes. While Hook has done a lot of evil things, we can't ignore that he does choose to turn a new leaf and become a more positive individual. However, we ask us, there must be atonement before redemption can truly begin. As such, we give the captain a prison sentence of 15 years. Even though he changes for the better, we can't ignore that he quite literally helped Charming as he tried to overthrow the current kingdom. It'll take a long time of solitude before we start to think this captain and has turned his life around. The next movie is The Bee Movie. While it's far from DreamWorks' most popular film, it still has a few villains that will have any bee ready to use their stinger. The first villain is Leighton T. Montgomery. He's a lawyer with a hatred for animals of the insect variety. Montgomery works on behalf of the honey companies against Barry's claim that they're participating in the harming of the bee community. Talking bee. This means that Leighton is guilty of both corruption and animal cruelty. He proudly shows that he has no problem fighting for companies that line his pockets. Pockets, so it makes you wonder somewhat what other horrible deeds he's covered up. With that in mind, we give Layton a decade in a jail cell. Though he's not as outwardly of a villain as others, Montgomery is still as evil and as despicable, in a more subtle way. It's gonna be a long time before he sees the outside world, but of course he can always bribe his way out. Next, we have Ken. Ken is the boyfriend of Vanessa until a certain Barry B. Benson begins talking to her. After this, Ken becomes jealous of Barry and is willing to resort to murder if it means that he has a chance of getting with Vanessa again. This means he has attempted murder, but considering that's the only crime he commits, Ken gets off rather easy when compared to some of his fellow villains. We think it's best if Ken gets a healthy few months of house arrest. Since Ken is only focused on taking out Barry, a long time in prison doesn't seem necessary in this instance. But as he does pose a threat to this particular insect, we think some time between them is what Ken needs. A restraining order will also likely be put in place, and Ken will probably be just fine with that. Don't forget, he hates bees. Our next film is Kung Fu Panda. This movie only features one villain, and that is Tai Lung. Tai Lung was a student to Shifu, and they went rogue. Tai Lung is the most powerful and cunning villain out of any to be covered today. He kicks off the list of his crimes by escaping a highly fortified prison, and he doesn't get any better after that. He's in interested in stealing the sacred dragon scroll, and he will kill anybody who stands in the way. Beyond just his attempts to kill Shifu and the Furious Five, he also kills many of the guards who are keeping him imprisoned, making him the only villain of this video to kill characters, even if they're minor. We have no choice but to give Tai Lung the death penalty. The only question that remains is how exactly would such a punishment be carried out? Seeing as the Kung Fu Panda films take a lot of inspiration from ancient China, it's likely that Tai Lung will meet his end via beheading, which was commonplace at that time. A savage, but
but it's only fitting that Tai Lung encounters a fate that lives up to his personality. The final movie of the day is Madagascar Escape to Africa. Our first character is the lion, Makunga. Makunga is a power-hungry and egotistical lion. He wants to become the alpha lion. He manipulates Alex into taking on a fighter far more powerful than he is, which leads to him and his father being banished from the land. Day Zuba would have to banish his own son? As a ruler, he is poor at his job and is clearly only interested in having the title of Alpha Lion and not any of the responsibilities. Given that he achieves the title through disingenuous means, we can also add usurpation of power to the docket, meaning he isn't too different from Prince Charming when it comes to crimes. However, Makunga is not nearly as dangerous or as intelligent as he was, which ends up getting Makunga out of a particularly harsh sentence. But abusing and usurping power, you can't take lightly, and as such, we give Makunga a life sentence. I mean, it could always be worse. He could be locked in a room with that old lady tourist for just a few minutes, and we still think he'd see this as a preferable option. The final character for the day is Makunga's right-hand man, Titsi. Titsi is the brawn to Makunga's brains. He's a loyal bodyguard and a crucial player in his plans to take over the land. He's the line Makunga convinces Alex to battle, and unsurprisingly, Titsi wins no problem. This was a rigged fight, so we believe this to be grounds for assault. Beyond that, Titsi isn't nearly as dangerous to society as his boss. With just one crime to his name, TT gets a rather lenient one year of jail time. While it might not be the most luxurious thing for a fighter to endure, at least he'll have plenty of time to sleep away. Besides fighting, that might be what he's best at. It's time to finish up the 2000s with Monsters vs. Aliens. Rounding out the villains of this era, we have the alien conqueror, Galaxar. While we've covered some pretty rotten eggs on this show so far, how many of them can you say wiped out an entire alien race? Nobody but Galaxar, and he does that before the events of the movie even begin. In the film, Galaxar has his sights set on Earth. What a miserable looking mud ball which he wishes to take over and use it to repopulate his now extinct species. The only thing standing between him and victory are the team of monsters led by Genormica, whom he battles on multiple occasions. Eventually, he's able to capture Genormica, and if it wasn't for her finding a way out, it's possible the team would have lost without her assistance. Beyond his battles with these monsters, he also utilizes a highly dangerous army of robot probes, who are used to wipe out as much of humanity as possible. His attempts end in both failure and the the loss of his own life. But it's still surprising that one villain was able to do so much and not a lot of screen time. Just think about it. He wiped out an entire species and was on his way to doing it again. We don't think anybody we've covered today comes anywhere close to that. For that reason, and many, many more, we have to give Galaxar the death penalty. Although he's not the only character in this video to get this sentencing, we find his to inarguably be the most justifiable. We don't know how a sentence like this would be carried out for an alien, but we think the fate he endures at the end is more than fitting. Galaxar is the most dangerous DreamWorks villain, and it's a fitting end to a roller coaster of a decade. Alright guys, that's it. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our choices, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.